all know them, don't we? Trusty companions in any situation. They reliably provide important information and help when planning and researching a variety of activities. Their users are as versatile as they are. They have a wide range of applications. Whenever one needs advice and orientation, Swiss Topo Swiss National Maps are available in different forms. There is an ever-increasing need for current, high-precision geodata. The national map has been given a new look to enable these data sets to be used in more ways in future and are ideally suited to their varied clientele. Every summit, street, path and house corresponds to reality to make the new map even easier and more intuitive to read. Let's take a look at the new national map and get a glimpse of how much effort and detailed work has gone into it. About 400 people work at the Federal Office of Topography, Swiss Topo, in Warburg near Bern. They measure and map Switzerland into its remotest corners. Dass wir überhaupt eine neue Landeskarte machen. We hope to gain more flexibility with our production of the new national map and the related changes. Colors can be changed more easily. Contents can be hidden or replaced. It would not be worth spending so much time just to change the printed map. But the increase in possibilities makes it worthwhile. The changes offer possibilities that we could only have dreamt of before, and now they have become reality. The first step was to optimize readability. To do this, the typeface was updated and the text repositioned so as not to affect the contents of the map. The old typeface on the earlier national map was outdated and harked back to the 1950s with its serifs and liaisons. The new typeface is also more compact and thus better for maps because it takes up less space. The colors used previously for the 50,000 and 100,000 scale maps are also being used for the 25,000 scale map. When the older map was developed, colors were less important as a design tool. Technology was also insufficiently advanced for color printing. Motorways are now shown in orange. Yellow is used for link roads. Major roads and railway lines are in red. This red for railway lines offers significant benefits. Since railway lines are now shown in red, we can also use red for station names, so I can orient myself better on the map. When I get off at a station, I now know right away where I am on the map. Borders that were previously shown in black are coloured magenta in the new map design. The new border symbols should also make things clearer. National borders have a thicker ribbon of colour with a line. And cantonal borders have a thinner ribbon of colour with a line. District borders are just a thin solid line. Municipal borders have a thin broken line. The symbols for paths and roads were also revised. 
Also die, die wichtigste Neuerung bei der Straßensignatur. The most important new feature for road symbols is the distinction between paved and unpaved surfaces. Schmale Straßen gehabt. Narrow roads were previously shown with a solid line on one side and a broken line on the other. But this symbol has been discontinued. Die hat immer auch ein bisschen zu Unsicherheit geführt. People often thought it meant an unpaved surface, but actually it stood both for paved and unpaved surfaces. The previous mountain trail symbol made it hard to assess the condition of the path. The new symbol now shows the trail sections that do not have a clear path but are part of a marked route as single dots. Also die Feedback ist sehr gut. The feedback is excellent, especially from the SAC, the Swiss Alpine Club. It's a question of safety. When you know for sure whether a hiking trail exists or if it's just a marked route, you have important information for safely planning a tour. Thanks to advanced measurement methods, Altitudes are now indicated even more precisely. Altitudes used to be measured directly on the terrain. Today we have 3D photography and laser measurements from aircraft that give us much more reliable data. Because of these new measurement methods, about 50% of all altitude references on the map will change. Not because the terrain has changed, but because we can measure much more accurately. The data gathered is much more precise and is integrated immediately into the map. For example, the 25,000 scale map needs 247 map sheets to cover all of Switzerland. These will all be revised by 2020. However, the new national map offers much more than just a paper version. Measurement methods have constantly developed since Switzerland was first surveyed. Previous generations attempted to depict the country as accurately as possible in maps. The Federal Topographic Bureau, which was the ancestor of today's Swiss Topo, began its work in Geneva in 1838. The first surveys of the Swiss Alpine region started in 1839 using fairly primitive surveying methods. Until recently, Cartographers did not have the tools they needed to file the collected data uniformly and to integrate it. What was formerly inconceivable has now become reality with the new national map. This is because there is a wealth of digital data behind each individual piece of information on the map. This data can be used intelligently for different purposes. Swiss Topo staff contribute a huge amount of raw data that is processed into a three-dimensional landscape model. Every house, every street, every measurement, every new feature in the Swiss landscape is stored and filed today at Swiss Topo on a three-dimensional platform, the topographic landscape model. This Swiss TLM 3D is the basic digital database, the starting point for all further work and for all Swiss Topo maps. In this three-dimensional model, everything is recorded using vectors. A vector is an object that not only contains color information like a pixel, 
but to which different information on the type of object, its position, characteristics and meaning can be assigned. Here we see a road portrayed as a vector. This line that shows the course of the road can now be given information telling it to represent a three meter wide road or a railway or a stream on a map. This mosaic of the topographic landscape model of Switzerland thus contains over 17 million vector-based objects that are processed by Swiss Topo to obtain an illustration of Switzerland in three-dimensional space. With the help of this data, a wide variety of different map models can be made available to users. All these variations are freely accessible to users on the website of Swiss Topo. Maps with a large amount of different geodata, such as snowshoe routes, aviation maps, military maps, or maps showing protected areas, can be found there and help us to plan our activities down to the last detail. The new national maps produced in all scales and in very different versions by Swiss Topo's own print shop are thus much more than simple prints on paper. A new national map represents a huge step into the future. It offers a representation of our country that has never before been so detailed, so accurate in terms of quality, so easy to read and so fast and easy to use in many different ways. The new Swiss national map.